Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we are deep diving into the newly released Italian monster, the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo and seeing how it fits in with the rest of the GT3 class on the iRacing platform in season 1 of the new year. At first thought, many may think of the Lamborghini as just another car released onto the iRacing service that fits into a pre-existing class and that'll be the end of the story. Well, that's not exactly the case this time around. The Lamborghini is actually a big deal for iRacing. Just three years ago, the simulator had fallen out of love with GT3 racing due to rival platform Assetto Corsa Competizione taking the Blancpain GT series naming rights away from iRacing. The iRacing World Championship at the time was renamed Effective immediately to reflect this. It was a messy public breakup. Since then, we've not received another GT3 car onto the iRacing site, with the last car dating way back to the Ferrari 488 GT3 in late 2017. This Lamborghini therefore represents a resurgence of GT3 competition on the platform. This particular car is the 2020 Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. The Lamborghini is built to slightly different aerodynamic regulations to that of any other GT3 on the sim at the moment, with a handful of real world rule changes happening since 2018. iRacing have updated the physics and balance performance of the other GT3 cars to compensate for this more modern car coming into the class. But nonetheless, visually, the Huracan does still stand out with its aggressive visual appearance and state-of-the-art aerodynamics. Built on the same chassis as the Audi R8 LMS, the Huracan does have many striking similarities with the German powerhouse. The first element you notice about the Lamborghini when you drive it on track, apart from that glorious V10 noise, is, unfortunately, the Audi Snap Oversteer when using the standard iRacing provided setups. The car requires a very, very precise touch on the middle pedal. Coming off the brake too fast when trail braking in this car causes it to become greatly unsettled and oftentimes spin around on you. For those used to the Audi R8 and McLaren MP412C on the platform, this shouldn't be a significant change for you guys, but for those coming from a BMW Z4 and Mercedes AMG background, well, welcome to the world of... Zbinala. Thankfully, there is a quick fix in the setup to make the car a little less unsettled on the brakes. The iRacing provided setups for high, medium and low downforce all have the car with a smaller rear master brake cylinder than at the front. By making these both equal, I increased the size of the rear master brake cylinder, I found the car became much more stable, in particular in loaded braking zones where you are still applying a little bit of steering lock at the peak of your brake pressure such as Imola's Aqua Minerale section, it was a big, big improvement. Following the changes to the rear master brake cylinder, the car, featuring ABS and trash control, is effortless to drive fast and at the limit. Being mid-engined, the mid-corner rotation is excellent, traction is no issue with the weight over the rear tyres, and the car feels like it excels the high-speed sections around the track with plenty of grip and change of direction scenarios. The Huracan also handles large curb strikes like the Variante Alta Chicana Imola better than expected as well, even on the iRacing baseline setups with basic damper settings. It will get thrown around more than a car like the Ferrari GT3 for example, but compared to the Audi, it does feel like this particular car is much more optimised for the rougher circuits such as Long Beach or Sebring. Me, being me, of course just had to take the car to the Nürburgring Nordschleife as well to see how it fared, and well, it's good news. The car was right on the pace as I would expect from the get-go, going under the 8 minute mark of the VLN layout, but feeling very comfortable while doing it. The uneven road surfaces, high curbs, awful compressions, the flat guard and jump, well, the Lamborghini did not struggle on any of these elements which was very encouraging. As mentioned, the Audi and Lamborghini share an identical chassis between the two cars, with the Nürburgring typically being a track where the Audi has been ruthlessly fast, but also incredibly unfriendly to the driver. For those interested in running the iRacing Nürburgring Endurance Series for example, the Lamborghini could be a great option instead of the Audi if it is included in the roster. One of the lovely little details about the car that no other GT3 or as far as I can really think of another car in the simulator has is the inclusion of different light options for the car. In the garage, you get the option to choose between the endurance light package being on or off. 
at default, it is turned off. But by selecting it in the garage, you get a very cool light bar on the front of the car as used in the Spa 24 hours and Daytona 24 hours in the real world. A very nice touch indeed. Along with this, the Lamborghini also has four different dash displays, which is almost unheard of for a GT car on iRacing. Day and night modes for the main display, along with two qualifying options available, including one taken from the Magnus Racing Team, who competed in the 2020 Daytona 24 hours with the Huracan Evo. So, in conclusion, is the car worth your US $11.95? For those that have an active interest in GT3 racing, whether that be for special events, VRS GT Sprint Series or IMSA, and can see themselves racing GT3 for a while to come, I do believe this car is absolutely worth buying. Being built to modern GT3 specification, of all the GT3 cars on the service at the moment, the Huracan will have the longest lasting shelf life of them all at this point in time, so it's definitely going to be supported well into the future. If you are someone that just dabbles in GT3 racing every once in a while though, maybe one race every four weeks or so, then maybe it could be worth skipping out on the Lamborghini this time around. The other GT3s have all been boosted in balanced performance up to the Huracan, so you will not be at any disadvantage in the races by driving something slightly older. And if you hold off buying the Lamborghini just a little while longer, there may be a new GT3 car launched onto the platform that takes your fancy a little more. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below for some more iRacing and sim racing content reviews, discussion, and news as well. Let me know your thoughts on the Lamborghini Huracan down in the comments down below. And otherwise, I'm Bo Albert, and I'll see you all in the next video.